show hosted by Meredith Salinger and her husband, Patton Oswalt. Mm -hmm. And what is the point of this show? Croge, please explain. Can I just say for the record, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, uh, if you don't mind hitting my number one off the bat, here's like their show opening, you know, like this is the summation of it all. Hey. Hey. What'd you think? About what? Did, did you get my text? Oh. Everything is too cute by half, and all yes. the music has laughter in it. It took me yeah. till the second listen to figure it out, but I'm like, they put in laughing in the music. Yeah, there's a there's a jingle for that last segment. Did you get our picks? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now, there's giggles in the production of it. Yeah. Now I play in a band that plays applause between tracks, and that's cool. But <laughs> playing right. laughter in your own show, and then I, I'm sorry to do this to you, but my number two is like the the introduction to the episode that I listen to, which is just like sums up the whole thing. Boy. Oh boy, uh, the day we are recording this on Labor Day of 2021. And people are coming over in an hour. We need to do a oh, very yeah, fast yeah. podcast. We got to do this quickly. Um, <laughs> Am I crazy? Or just not do one of those. Yeah, like I, I think about WATP. I actually look forward to it. I put a sure. bunch of work into it. I come over. Like these guys are like, oh, fuck. There's like people coming over and I still got to clean the toilet out. Can can we just bang this out real fucking quick and then get on with the day? Like, And is this like a big part of their income? Because one of the things that I picked up on was it was like a radio show. The first 18 minutes included about nine minutes of yeah. what I'll call content, mm -hmm. although I'm not sure content's the right word. Yeah. It was almost all commercials. Yeah. There's commercials at the beginning and then there's multiple commercial breaks throughout the show. So it almost seems like they have to bang these out because they're obligated, and maybe that's what's paying the mortgage or something. I, I think Patton's still a pretty successful comedian, right? They move a lot of product. They sure do. All right. So this is um, the very start of the show for the episode that I listened to. Mm -hmm. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Did You Get My Text? I'm Patton Oswalt. I'm Meredith Salinger. Oh, we have so much to tell you today. We really do. I have a story that embarrassed me highly. Really? You want to start with that one, or can I start with mine? I hate when you say, do you want to start, or do I want to start? Well, then, then start then. Go. Ugh. Well, now I don't want to start. Go ahead. Well. You guys, are we fighting already? It's it's everything you would hope a married couple wouldn't oh, do on a show. And seriously? it went off the bat. This was the most recent episode. It sounds like shit. Yeah. There are two executive producers who helped put this out. I don't understand how that's possible. It's shocking. Purchase a microphone. Yeah. I actually picked up on that. There's like, these are two people who don't like each other very much. Like, they come off as people who've been married a long time and are not as happy as they need us to believe they are from their shiny podcast intro and the great, you know, photo on the cover of the show and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I picked up on that, too. Let's get into my least favorite thing that people do, not just in podcasting, but in general, mm -hmm. is explain to you a text conversation mm -hmm. they had with <laughs> a group of people, yeah. explaining even the emojis that were used. And the reason why I hate this is because you're not that interesting. Yeah. You're, you're really, you're not. This is a text exchange. Okay, go ahead. And it, I wrote, oh, perhaps I will come as well and sit in the audience with you guys and watch your faces as he makes fun of me. Ha <laughs> ha. And then you wrote, you are barred from the venue, Meredith. And then I wrote, dude. And then I gave you like an F you emoji. Yeah, yeah. And then the girl of the other couple was like, ha ha ha. And I was like, ha ha ha. Holy shit. All right. You know, I've been wow. in these texting conversations with friends and family. I didn't want to be in them. Yeah. Let alone hear about somebody else's. It's worse than hearing about someone's dream. Like, did you have a dream last night you could explain instead of this fucking conversation? And I know you probably want to pick up the ball and run with it, Croge, but I have yet another oh, clip awesome. that continues on with this text exchange where these two and another couple who are planning on going to see Pat and do comedy continue to have this exchange. And then you wrote, see any emojis in my text? Question mark. And then I gave you like a mad face bitmoji. Oh. And then you wrote, oh my God, that's the new, do I stutter? Meaning, see any emojis in my text? Did I stutter? That's funny. And then I wrote, I'm waiting for, her name was Claudia. I said, I'm waiting for Claudia to post her emoji now, which was like, oh dear, they're fighting kind of a thing. And then I wrote, Patton, you're scaring them and you're embarrassing me. And Claudia's like, I'm loving this. And then you wrote, quote, insulting them and embarrassing me, which is a uh, from 
Indiana Jones, and the Temple Harrison, of Doom. Harrison Ford says that to Kate Capshaw and says, oh. you're insulting me and you're embarrassing me, which is funny because you That's like to anyway. Night. And then you wrote, all right, my plane's taking off. I'll get back on the thread later. And I wrote, bye-bye, safe flight, and F you. <laughs> and then Claudia wrote safe travels, and I wrote, love ya, mean it. But I didn't really, because now I was mad. What is going on here? So one thing I did pick up on when I was clipping this, I just realized now, is the other husband never gets involved in this exchange. He wants no. nothing to do with this. And I think the reason why Patton is so involved in it is that Patton is whipped by this woman. I, I think he's out of his league. And for whatever reason, because this is a guy who should be the host of the show being told to shut up. Hang on. So you think the Wait, tech... Wait, just right. be quiet. God. So then... A little SOD so we can, can't possibly monetize this episode on Ooh. YouTube. Just, just got enough in there to make it sure there's a copyright strike mm. against me. So, uh, yeah, I, I, Patton comes off as a, a dork. On oh, this show. Yeah. I don't want to be part of his relationship with his wife. It's it's embarrassing. Mm-hmm. And I don't know why he does this show. Yeah, the, the whole thing's embarrassing. Like, uh, if you don't mind hitting my number 11, this was the like literally the one time in the 50-something minute episode I listened to where they tried to be funny about something. I hadn't sat down in a long... I, was, I used to be so crafty. I had like yeah. a little business when I was in my <laughs> 20s just for fun. Mm-hmm called Upsy Daisies and I used to make these little <laughs> silk flowers with little rhinestones in them yeah. and with little Velcro and you could just stick it was very cute she was the inspiration for the Beastie Boys song She's Crafty by the way if you listen to the lyrics yeah so anyway um, that's fact um, in my world she's number one with a handful of glitter and a hot glue gun I think that's one of the lines yeah and uh, then yeah, they go anyway. she's crafty crafty anyway Meredith Salinger's <laughs> crafty anyway I'm sick of their shit <laughs> fuck these motherfuckers <laughs> Do you think Meredith Thank even you, got that joke? And she uh, didn't seem to. She seemed to think that that song was about someone who likes arts and crafts. Uh, I don't even want to think about it. Okay, I hey, sorry, it. sorry, Crush. <laughs> you made your point with Alex Jones. I shouldn't have asked any further details on that. that yeah. That's my fault. My apologies on it. Um, all right, let's talk about what these two do for fun. Yeah. Because... I don't know. From what I can tell, it seems like they're really boring people, mm. but maybe not. So Patton has an 11 year old daughter who plays on a basketball team. Mm. And as you guys know, I'm a big sports fan. Yeah. And when tween girls are playing basketball, I'm mm. all in. I was so wired um, by this game. It was genuinely amazing. Uh, these two girls teams going at these each other. These are 12 year olds. 12 year olds. But. Kind of aggressive. 11, and year, 11, 10, 11, and 12 year olds. Like real cager <laughs> energy. Like, um, what a story, Mark. He's, he's legitimately talking about how amazing this basketball game was. They talked about it for a while. Yeah. And I can tell you this game sucked when they tell me what the final score was. They it got was like three. It was like 97 to three. It wasn't well, no, 97. The other team like, <laughs> did not get into double digits. I think they only got nine. Yeah, but what we did we get? Like 20 or 40s. 30? Yes, something like the score was 20 to 9, a basketball game. Wow. One of the teams scored single digit points in a basketball team. And Patton's like, this was a really good game. I mm. was riveted by this mm. game. Patton, that sucks. Yeah. And you shouldn't talk about it on a podcast. Yeah. It's nice that you support your daughter. I have no problem with that. Just don't repeat it to your friends or podcast listeners. That's yeah. all. That's all I ask. Mm. Is it too much? Mm. They both have a way with a story. So. <laughs> I got a pair of clips for you, right? This was so weird. They both tell the same story, okay? Okay. So number nine is Meredith's version of the story. We were watching a movie the other day, and there was someone in the background as an extra, and it was Morgan Freeman. Okay. Cool. Okay. Cool, yeah. Um, Because num- normally he wouldn't be an extra. Number 10 is Patton Oswalt's version of the exact same story. We were watching A Man Called Adam, directed by uh, Leo Penn, Michael, Chris, and Sean's father, and it was a, a straight-up drama with uh, Sammy Davis Jr. as a very troubled uh, jazz trumpeter um, and, and a young, gorgeous Cicely Tyson. Um, and yeah, and, and, the, and the, the background people in it, the, there's a party scene. There's a party scene where Mel Torme uh, is singing. Uh, Ozzie Davis is at the party. Cicely's there. 
Uh, and in the background, no dialogue, just talking up to women is a very young... Very handsome and Dewey, tall. Dewey-faced uh, Morgan Freeman. God, he's oh, handsome. Yeah. yeah. He's eating snacks and enjoying himself. He's just an extra. He's an extra. It's like a toddler telling you the story. I didn't think he was going to get there. And I then, thought he was going to forget why he was talking about it. And then this happened. And then the Red Ninja was there. And then he fought this guy. And then his brother was there. And then, and, blah, 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 and then oh my God. Her story was way better. Yes. That's a nine word story. I watched a movie. That was the extra. Boom. Done. Done and done. I, I'm not a fan of Meredith Salinger. She no. really is irritating in every mm. single way. Mm. However, when I just looked at those clips and I saw her version was four seconds <laughs> and his was 48, <laughs> I went, I have a feeling I'm going to like her version of this story better. Yeah. And I was correct on that. Now, she has a way with words as well. So uh, I have a bunch of clips we'll get to later, but... Patton is trying to do this thing, but he can't get to the thing because she keeps derailing him. Now, she tries to plug her friend's Instagram, and every time she name drops someone you don't give a fuck about, the speed goes up 10%. So <laughs> okay. here's a number three is a one minute clip. One of my best friends and her husband do the most fun Instagram, and they call it 70s on Sunday. Okay. And basically, let me just give you a little background of who these people are. All right. My friend Trisha Lee Fisher is the daughter of Connie Stevens and Eddie Fisher, wow. two huge stars back in the 50s. She's a little sex kitten diva actor singer, and he's mm -hmm. the crooner of all time. Okay. Right. Um, she grew up in Vegas watching her. <laughs> there, basically, there's a photo of her mom and dad sitting on the median of a street, and the flamingo's on one side with her dad playing, and uh, mm -hmm. the other famous hotel has her mom playing. She grew mm -hmm. up with Sammy Davis Jr. and all of these oh, amazing wow. people. And so she's an amazing singer. And her husband, too, her husband Byron Thames, is an actor. Mm -hmm. um, for those of you who like trivia, if you ever saw Johnny Dangerously, he played the young Michael Keaton. He played the young Michael Keaton oh. in that. He's amazing. Anyway, so the two of them are hilarious and they're both talented. And now, we're one minute into her saying, you have to check out my friend's Instagram. She's not even close. Right. It's another minute and a half before she even gets there. But I've spared you that. Oh, thank you. <sighs> so, the the... Celebrity talk was interesting in this because I didn't expect Patton Oswalt, a guy I've known about for decades yeah. and used to think was like an edgy alt comic. For real, yeah. And he's he's in on this like celebrity gossip show for some reason. And in front of us is Dwayne Wade. Do you know who that is? No. He is a tall, handsome, very famous basketball player. Okay. Um, he's married to Gabrielle Union. They're the cutest couple. Oh. They were on the dance floor just being all hot and sexy. And Gabrielle is ridiculously gorgeous. The two of them are specimens of yeah. beauty. It's redonkulous. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love that Patton had no idea who Dwayne Wade was. The only guy he should know from this story. But he's like, oh, Gabrielle Union. Oh, yes. Okay. And then... She's talking about this party she went to without him. Mm -hmm. And all the people were there. And, of course, she's keyed in on this really hot black guy who used to play basketball. And then you learn that it sounds like maybe Patton is a cock. Now, let me just preface this by saying, in my life, uh, I've had people be like Shaq, for instance. Mm -hmm. When I, I met Shaq and I were friends for a long time. When I first met him, he's like, I know you. Because mm -hmm. he knew a movie I did. He's like, I know you. And then we became really good friends. Um, oh. yeah, you guys want to translate that one? I, I know what that means. And then yada, yada, yada. We're having coffee the next morning. And then, <laughs> and then I let Patton out of the closet so he could clean up. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> if that was my show, and then my wife was on it, and she was telling a story that I'd be like, you you never tell that story again. You don't, you don't talk about Shaq or all my friends or all my podcast. What's uh, wrong with you? Uh, <laughs> all right, what else did you pick up out here, Crush? Um, okay, the one I listened to, this is just a little piece, but the last, like, 10 minutes is Meredith telling a story. It's my number 14, and this is, like, just kind of the basis of the story. So she gave me the thing to sign, and there's a little area to leave a tip, and, you know, they give you like 15%, 20%, 22%, that mm -hmm. kind of a thing. I, my glasses, the whole thing, it's hard for me to see. And I did see the 22%, but when I wanted to do the math, I don't know what came over me, but I thought I should make this even. So I think I did like 10 cents less than the 22% tip thing. Not that it's a big deal because that's still a nice tip, but it's still a nice tip. It's 22% is a nice tip. It's just a touch under. And, and then... I handed the thing back to the lady. I was like, thank you so much. That was so nice of you. Um, and then she said, hey, I just want to tell you, I love your podcast. I'm not even going to eight minutes of her that I leave a big enough tip, but I should, could have left a better tip. And then she said, I like the podcast. And I felt guilty. But, uh, and then Patton just sighing throughout the whole yeah. thing. <laughs> yeah, that's very telling. 
He's uh, he's trying to let her know like this is a boring story. Oh my! And God. I just want to point something out because Meredith has been a celebrity her entire life. She doesn't understand how this works. Yeah. People in the service business are not calculating the percentage tip they gave you. They know the difference between ten cents. They know the ten cents is, is nothing. Yeah. So they're not sitting there and going, "This bitch didn't give me twenty two percent." It's just like, why does that have to be even? What's the difference? But ten yeah. cents, who cares? Whatever. Either way. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> who fucking cares? Gives a shit. Oh. All right, so let's talk about the one time I did agree with Meredith. Okay, let's stop fighting. I want to talk uh, about something. Hang on. Yeah, let's stop fighting because I might lose this argument. I'm not going to lose the argument. I just think people are going to be annoyed with us fighting. Okay. Check out the big brain on Brad. <laughs> You're a smart motherfucker. That's right. Yes. It's, it's extremely annoying, to be honest with you. Yeah. All right, so... Let's get to the uh, final segment of the show. Mm. Velcro is your friend. It is my friend. Now it's time for Did You Get Our Picks? Yeah, tell you what we like, what we really, really like. Yeah, tell me what you like, what you really, really like. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, my picks. Um, the, the giggling thing, like we were talking about earlier. Yeah, it's... To let you know, like, oh, this is going to be fun, guys. This yeah. is going to be a fun segment that we're doing right now. And, as you know, my favorite thing about podcasts, let me tell you what I watched on TV this week. Exactly. This is some basic bitch talk right here from our friend Patton. So far. I hate this. I hate this. What? I hate how how when a show is good and then it ends, and then you're like, come on. I need, like, 50 more episodes. <laughs> because, well, like, there's a show called The Great, which just needs more episodes and there's succession which i could watch till the end of time yeah like give me a thousand episodes of succession well the most egregious offender in that category to me is um uh phoebe waller uh um phoebe waller bridge her, and fleabag in fleabag two that seasons six episodes each season fuck off what kind of heroin dealer bullshit is that where you hook us that hard and then it's gone and it's never coming back i mean that's all you get that's exactly what it is heroin deal but it does your husband just said that um (laughs) i couldn't be more bored with people telling you how great the tv shows they like are yep and you know what the worst part is croach they're not going to make more of them oh my god i know oh my god can you believe it can you believe it holy Fucking shit. I can't believe the Flintstones went off the air when it did. It really it's, left you on a cliffhanger. Yeah, unbelievable. <laughs> um, <laughs> Can I throw... These people are so fucking boring. Yeah. Why is this a show? <laughs> this one I listened to, like, the main segment up front is Patton Oswalt was watching some 70s TV show, and he wants to, like, play a medley game of, like, talk about music. And, you know... I love when people talk about music. Sure. So, number four, he tries to, like, set up this game, but he gets completely derailed. They segue into one of the first songs Cher ever sang on, uh, the Ronettes Do Run Run. Which, again, totally embarrassing for him to have to sing. And P.S., when I was eight years old, I had a Sean Cassidy birthday party. Go on, honey. There you go. Um, that was a, I know uh, you're going to ask, what's a Sean Cassidy birthday party? Well, it was it Sean Cassidy. Yeah, hang on. Wait a minute. Why <laughs> well, we'll did I breeze? Back. Well, I'm so into this. No, no, no. Keep telling we'll that. We'll go back to the Sean we'll Cassidy part. I'm just I don't saying, know what that I was means. obsessed with him and I had a birthday party. Okay. Okay. Um, so then they go into uh, to do run, run. Okay, so he set, he's got a thing he's trying to set up right. that will kill 20 minutes of his godforsaken and show. And he's trying to get into a flow, a rhythm, he's playing this. can't even get out the first sentence. And you can hear him, like, exhaling, yeah. and then he's like, okay, honey, and he tries to talk, and then she has to interrupt him again and be like, I know you want to ask me about that. And then she interrupts him again to be like, keep telling that story, keep telling that story. <laughs> okay, okay, all right, great. Uh, but then they finally set up the fucking game. But so, uh, what, what would be, like, the ultimate cheesy... Seven. Like I'm trying to. What would be the What would be the weirdest grouping of songs where it's the hardest gear shift from each one? So you, like you start off. Let's say you're starting off with Cher doing. Um, let's say it's it, okay. It's Cher and David Bowie. They're doing "I Got You, Babe." Okay. Okay. So then they go from "I Got You, Babe" to what? What would be the? Oh my God! How do they go from that? To, um, they go from "I Got You, Babe" to Zeppelin's "Babe, I Gotta Leave You." So that's the first transition. Okay. Okay. And then now they're doing, babe, I'm going to leave you. And it's this big bluesy thing. And they have to go into what? What is... Then, <laughs> then they have to go... Baby, come back. Ba- <laughs> or... Any kind of fool uh, could, could see. see. There was something. 
Oh, okay. this All is right. this I'm is sorry. not a good game. I know this is going on forever. I know. <laughs> this I know. is not well executed. I know. But what's a song that doesn't sound like this song? A bunch of them. I don't know. Like there's not, there's not a song that don't sound like that song. And there's no point to any of this or whatever. <laughs> Wouldn't that be a weird medley? Yeah. Sure. I guess. So, I guess that would suck. So then we heard, uh, <laughs> you know, Meredith throws in her two cents, but pff, incorrect, Meredith. You fucked up. So hang on. So they've and gone. Then, you light up my life. But, the, but, you but give me hope. I, I want jarring transitions. That's not bad. I'm just saying from, from like to go from Young Americans to Song Sung Blue, that is a jarring transition. Yeah. So I'm saying they're doing I Got You, Babe. Then they go into Babe, I Gotta Leave You. <laughs> and then they go into. um. You light up my life. Yeah, although yeah. those are both slow kind of. No, it went from fast. It, you went. Go on. <laughs> I love that. Just a long pause. Go on. And then she, Meredith, I don't think this game is for you. I don't think you're picking up what he's trying to put down here. And then she continues to argue her case. Babe, I gotta leave you is a big bluesy, dreamy song. So I, I from, know what Babe, I gotta leave yeah, you is. But what I'm saying but is, but then I'm saying the word you, and I'm taking it to a cheesy thing with "You light up my life," which is Led Zeppelin. To right. That, I was thinking more of like a funny. harsh tempo transition. But yeah, like like going from you light up my life to then C.W. McCall's Convoy. Like if they had to go from that, <laughs> imagine going from you light up my life to into Convoy. Convoy. God, that song. Look, at, they're both wrong. All right, oh can I just God. say that nobody's right in this yeah, argument. Just say Iron Man and move on. And <laughs> who the fuck under the age of 50 has ever even heard the song Convoy? I mean, for real, dude. That's well, not one that's held up over time. <laughs> that's and true. then here's how they wrap up the bit. And then you got to do convoy, and then you have to go into, um, oh, hang on, like like a, uh, uh, oh, what's up? Hang on, so you're singing con- convoy. We got a big old, and then, and then what do they go into that's so horrifying? I have no idea, but let's take a break, and we'll come back. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, that sucked. That was a terrible bit. Oh my god. Guys, they, we should do that with TV shows. Like what if we were watching Breaking Bad and then and then Fraggle Rock was the next show and then and then now you go Chris and then why? I don't know how to follow that. Oh man. Oh and then god. Inspector Gadget shows up. No. Whoa! Not that crow. That's not the, that's not what we're talking about. Not no. cool, dude. That's yeah, totally dude. wrong. Inspector Gadget and Fraggle Rock pretty much the same show. Yeah, what idiot. the fuck? It's gonna be jarring. Not cool, dude. <laughs> I'm gonna hazard a guess that it sucks to play any game with Meredith. Oh, <laughs> with either of them. All of that was so fucking pointless. Good God. All right, so this is Meredith telling a very compelling story about her love for the game Backgammon. Oh. Um, well, should oh. we take a break or? No, I don't want to take a break because there's oh. one more thing I want to talk about. Go ahead. Does it, does it tie into the foods thing? It ties into gifts. Oh, okay. Because you know that I'm obsessed with backgammon and I want to play all the time. And, oh, yeah. And I have to, like, force Alice to play with me. Mm-hmm. And did I tell you that – did we already talk about the fact that I played with this little girl the other day who's, like, six – and she's like a shark. I think I talked about it in the you last episode. You sat her down and taught her the rules, and she just yeah, took so to we it played. immediately. That being said, I have many cool backgammon boards. Yes, Boring. A bunch, like one one in every room. Right. So I can trick someone into playing with me. It's <laughs> boring or rather bad. Like, as you want to play backgammon? Shit. Please, come on. Just one game. Right, right, right. So I have this board, and it's so great looking. It's, it's light blue and dark blue, and it has This rambling, really boring cool, conversation. Uh, uh, checkers, You're boring, except everybody. it had yellow checkers, and mm. I don't like that color combo. Everyone pretend right. podcast. So I was just like curious. So I looked online, and you can buy colored checkers. Quit boring, everyone. And I bought pink pearl, and the board looks so much better now. <laughs> and now I want to play on that board because I didn't want to play on it before, because I didn't like the yellow and blue combo. This is boring. The whole thing. <laughs> She's literally explaining the color combinations on backgammon. That's unreal. And this is one of the first things out of the gate. She's like, hold on a second. I got to tell you this story. Yeah. This is unreal. You won't believe what I what I found online. Different colors of checkers for backgammon. Well, please, let's, let's get that in before we get to our uh, commercial breaks. And then if you're wondering who listens to the show, yeah. a lot of times you can tell a lot about an audience from the advertisers. Because mm-hmm. the advertiser wants to reach that audience. 
Ever wake up wishing you could just go to work in your comfy pants? Every single morning, Meredith. I do it every day, and you can too with Beta Brand's dress pant yoga pants. They're stylish and polished, but with the comfort of your favorite loungewear. All right, so their audience is overweight frumps, Yeah, is what I'm guessing from this. Do you, do you hate wearing nice clothes? Yeah, <laughs> fuck that shit. <laughs> well, good, good news. These clothes kind of look like they're nice, but they aren't. Yeah. Okay, sign me up for that. Meredith also, and this is also right from the very beginning of the show, I have no idea what word she's looking for. Neither does Patton. Maybe one of you guys can help. Push Why everyone. do you have to be that person? You're like, you're so, what's that word with the people who go to Coachella and they're just so dressed up and like need to be that person, you know, with the hat and the braids and the leather and the feathers. What? It's just so, it, the word is not pretentious. I'm not looking for that. The mm -hmm. word is like, like, oh God, we're so cool and artsy. Like. I think it's pretentious. That's, that's, that's so I don't know. dumb. Well. <laughs> what is she talking about? You know those people who go to music festivals and they dress nice and they wear their hair a certain way, but they also put a hat on? Crows, you know what I'm talking about. What's the word for that specific oh. thing? Can I do a reverse lookup in I, Webster's to yeah. find out? I like the hat with the feather. That's <laughs> that's key to the description. Called it macaroni. Yeah. All right. I have uh, another thing from one of these ad reads, and they do a blue chew spot. And this tells me a little something about these two's love life. Mm. I'm guessing it's not all that spontaneous. You can take them anytime, day or night, so you can plan ahead. Please plan ahead or be ready whenever the opportunity arises. Please plan ahead? Mm. Hey, honey, what time do you want to do it today? Because <laughs> I'm, I'm just, I'm going through my calendar. And I just need to be able to, like, put that in and figure yeah. that out. Can I pencil you in for 6 o'clock? <laughs> Are you free from 6 to 6.01? <laughs> Oh, wait, I got a blue chew. Make it 602. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. All right. And then, um, of course, she has to make Patton feel bad about his penis size because that's what uh, married couples like to do. Hmm. And so I bought those things on the Internet. <laughs> this is embarrassing. But, boys, you've got your little thing there that you can just whip it out and go well, to the it's bathroom. It's not that little. <laughs> go ahead. You've got your teensy tiny little uh, thing there. No, you see, I got a big piece. <laughs> it's the most annoying. And I hadn't oh. listened to the show. I just heard them on Doug Benson's show. And I'm yeah. like, oh, if they're this annoying on their show, this is going to suck. Yeah. And lo and behold, it's worse than I thought it was going to be. Yeah. Married couples do not podcast together. Oh. Please, never do that. What you should do is po podcast about the other person and act like you're talking behind their back. Oh, yeah. There That's what Adam Carolla used to do with his wife. He made a career out of it. <laughs> it makes a lot of sense. All right, so and let me tell you what this bitch did last night. <laughs> she never I, listens to the show. It's fine. And did I tell you about the buffing compound? <laughs> yes, we heard about. <laughs> now, I thought this was interesting. I mean, maybe it's because I follow stand-up comedy, so I know a thing or two about stand-ups. Mm -hmm. And stand-up comedy, well, it turns out Meredith didn't realize that when Patton goes on tour, he does the same act every night. Hmm. When we first got married, I was all excited to watch your shows because, you know, we just met. <laughs> it was new. It was novelty. It was new. new. I was like, is he funny? New toy out of the box. So I'd go. But I realized after watching you the third time, it was the exact same, you know, you're, you, do, you do the same set. Um, it took her three times to figure that out. Yeah. And the third time she's going, I know the punchline to this. Why is that? Did yeah. I write this joke? Oh, that's right. He said it the other two times I saw him too. Uh, Holy shit, Meredith. Uh, that's kind of how that works. Okay. Um, what else do you have on here, Croge? You know, I only got one more. Okay. Number 16. Anyone who's a white supremacist is just got such low self-esteem. They're just the most miserable yeah. people. Does she know a lot of them? Carl, How does she know that? Carl's the happiest guy I know. <laughs> yeah. Self-esteem is not my problem. Yeah. <laughs> Wait a second. Are you implying? <laughs> are you trying to imply, sir? Um, I love that at the end of this episode, so they're doing the picks, and she brought nothing to the table. Patton's yeah. got two things, and then she tries to figure out if they're still doing the show or not. All Do right. you have another pick or no? Uh, no, those are my two picks this week. Well, then that was a great episode. That was really great. Oh, no, it wasn't. <laughs> if you didn't know when it was going to end, shades of Opie there. That was really great. 
Uh, I don't think that's true at all. All right. Uh, that's that. I, that I, I, I have some more clips on here, but it's not even worth it. It's more of the same. Yeah. My problem with the show was it was so boring, but not even boring enough to be mockable in most parts. You know what I mean? It was just such milk toast, and they were like quibbling, but not quite arguing. And it it was so not fun to listen to, but I found it also tough to clip and kind of make fun of. You know what I mean? Well, they're unlikable people. Yeah, it really was. They're, just... they're people you don't want to hang out with. Who are these podcasts? W-A-T-P.